Have you guys heard about the great stink of England? <laughs> what is the great stink of England? <laughs> like, people were dumping so much sewage and carcasses and all that into the River Thames. <laughs> Like Back and it day. got really hot for like three years straight. <laughs> and that, that made it from out. <laughs> yeah, that the whole city was just stinky. They the prob- asthma theory <laughs> proving correct. <laughs> they probably deserve There's that. There's some good historical drawings of it. This is what you get for dumping sewage <laughs> in a body. Just like of water. the River Thames with like stink lines <laughs> over it. This guy is uh giving his card to the stink monster, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I know this this silly stuff. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, great stink. Father Tim. That's why England is the best country in the world. <laughs> Look, England was a fine country until they did Brexit, and now it's falling, all going to shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a country I'll never live in. Yep. And rip the NHS. <laughs> oh, rip more than the NHS. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's making like less than Croatians make these days. Oh yeah, rip the energy, energy too. Yeah, to be in the top one percent, I think you have to make a hundred and twenty thousand pounds Which is a year. Nothing. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. Especially since the pound has devalued so much since Brexit. Right. <laughs> no, I, I was shocked when I heard that. I was like, oh my god. That's nothing. So like inflation. Like that's but like that's like that's like inflation, that's like but it's entirely your own percentile in the United States. Mm-hmm. The pound being devalued is like inflation, but it's entirely their own damn fault. Yeah. I'm so glad my parents moved to America. Here we are. I'm glad I'm I was born in this country. We have American different problems, and they're less bad. Because at least I know <laughs> I'm free. Everyone has problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every country has their own unique problems. Mm-hmm. Ours is theocratic fascism. The Brits yeah. is like everything. Everything, <laughs> everything at this yeah. point. I mean, you know. France is like I don't know. The oh, ha, ha, they are trying to regress. The retirement age to 62 instead of 61, huh? We will go and protest in the streets for six years. Yeah. <laughs> the baguette store is closed because <laughs> the owner is on leave. <laughs> well, yeah. actually, almost everyone... French French class culture coming out here. Um, <laughs> like, in August, every year, like, everyone in France just goes on vacation. <laughs> like, the entire country, basically. Nice. Yeah, that's except for the French. south of France, which right. goes on vacation in July because oh, everyone so goes they to go the to south vacation of the other ones. one. Yeah, that's smart. then all of England goes to France <laughs> no. or Portugal. Well, they did. Now they don't have the money to. <laughs> yeah, so they just <laughs> yeah they go to Somerset or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whose idea was they it? They go to, to Dover. <laughs> Whose idea was it to make Brexit a like a legally binding referendum instead of just like a opinion poll? God. The I Tories. Oh yeah, that, that Tories as always. <laughs> and yeah, my family voted for Brexit. So, some some of my family. Oh. oh no, no, just... no one, no one in the entire country <laughs> thought it was serious or knew what they were actually voting for. So. What they were voting yeah. for is like it's the destruction economy. of their s- entire country. Yeah. yeah, just making everything significantly worse. Yeah. Anyways. They should have just phrased it that way. Do you want to make everything significantly worse? <laughs> well, yeah, knowing right. like knowing like the average Tory voter, they would probably click yes if it was to own <laughs> labor. Yeah. Uh, it was nice visiting in the As long as it... <laughs> go ahead. I'm in no rush to go back to England. As long as it hurts the immigrants, it's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> You're speaking like a true Brit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Defund the NHS. Defund the NHS. No. Well, the do they have NHS. funding anyway? No. Wait, can you can't defund, can't defund something. Can't defund something. Has no funding. <laughs> have funding. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Live from the Marriott Library at the University of Utah. This is the Red Line Podcast. Welcome to the internet. I'm your co-host <laughs> for Raccoons in a Trench Coat, Dunstan, and these are my hosts, Alex Fielder and Kyle Holland. Today we're diving into ferries and what makes them perhaps the most interesting transit mode of all. We'll talk <laughs> Rogos, water taxis, and more after the news. Rogos is an acronym. The wheels on the ferry <laughs> go row, 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 row. The wheels on the ferry go row, 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 half the year long. What do you mean half the year? It's frozen the other half. No, it's not. Maybe three quarters of the year. The ocean doesn't freeze very much. Well, not all ferries go not in the ocean. Long. Yeah, but Have most of the river rivers ferries don't really with, like, freeze the cool, with the cool cables? Yeah. What about ponds? 
There's you don't, no ferries yeah, across you ponds. You, gr- you drive around a pond. I like, the whole point of bridge. a ferry is that you need, like, a significant body of water It's difficult to cross. Like the Utah Lake. Yes, like Utah <laughs> Lake. <laughs> Fine. In that case, ferries are invulnerable to snowstorms. Yeah. Except on Utah Lake, where it would be frozen some parts of the year. Oh, and then you couldn't use the ferry to get to your I mean, single family detached you bring, house on the you drive You bring style. a Russian icebreaker ferry to Utah Lake, and it simply eviscerates ice. Yes? Yes. We? Oui. Da. Slay that lake. Yeah. yeah. Tear it up. Uh, the news. Yesterday, February 27th, full service finally began from the Long Island Railroad's new Grand Central Madison Terminal to Long Island. Eastside access is finally done, decades and billions of dollars after it was begun. As an upshot, service across the LIRR network has been increased by nearly 41%, and a, quote, combo ticket has been introduced, allowing passengers to seamlessly transfer from Metro North Train to the LIRR. Even though it cost way more than it should have, this is a substantive step forward for regional rail in the United States' largest metro. Yeah, so why did they build the whole brand new Grand Central underneath regular Grand Central? Because sharing is for wusses, is why. Oh, okay. And that, you know, Metro North couldn't sh- possibly share any of the, like, 23 platforms at Grand Central. 23, it's like 100. Or, like, 50 platforms, 100 oh. tracks, more like. There you go. It's a lot. Couldn't, it's a lot. couldn't possibly share any of those, so they had to build, you know, $11 yeah. billion dollar project. Yeah, how much of the project cost was the new terminal versus I'm the tunnel? I'm betting it's probably at least half. So you could have built two uh, You could have built, yeah. Two like, tunnels. I don't know, eight-track instead of four-track oh or whatever it is. Yeah, is it four-track? I don't nice. know. Probably. It's New York. It might be four-track. I hope so. I mean, with the amount of... They're going to run, like, 300 trains a day through the thing, so... I guess that might also be why they want the more crap at the terminal. Hmm. As long-term service service expansions. I mean, yeah, but with 50 platforms. Like, they couldn't have given, like, I don't know, five? Like, the, there aren't that many platforms in, in Grand Central Madison. Like, they didn't... Yeah, how many are there? Like, five. Maybe eight. Four platforms. Oh, I was right the first with time. With eight tracks. Um, regular Grand Central has, like, a hundred-some tracks and half as many platforms. Yeah, so as you can see, Metro North clearly couldn't have given any of its... Is there, like, a geometry reason for this with, like, tunnel depth and Well, such? Metro North uses um, overhead and LIR uses third rail, you but... both of those at the same time. You, you possibly... You couldn't possibly, you know, convert a few tracks to have... The ability to have third rail trains on them. You can have both. Yeah. Oh, of course, whole new concourse. So, um... With retail and dining. So you made Grand Central more complicated and worse, and it cost a lot of money because Metro North refuses to give up its super inefficient operating patterns. There's... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Always. There's gotta be some sort of geometry reason for There's building no geometry reason. It's eight more just tracks. because they refuse to cooperate. Great. That's dumb. Good project, should have done it cheaper. Next. (laughs) The show. (sighs) The show. That was entirely necessary. Yeah. (sighs) I'm tired. What is a ferry? What is a ferry? I'm that's a that's a question. It's the eternal question. Actually, I'm going to slap both of you. <laughs> <laughs> For what reason? Yeah. For asking the what is question. But what is a ferry? What is a ferry? I refuse to dignify that question. A with ferry a does what its name suggests: ferrying oh passengers across a body. This is <laughs> not a Wikipedia or a Google definition. We're pulling the like the self-aware. This I'm is a stupid this question <laughs> to ask. Oxford English <laughs> <laughs> dictionary. Oh, all copies of the Oxford, Oxford English Dictionary are checked out of the library. I guess you can't read it. Uh, fun fact, you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> fun fact, you can look up your mom on the internet. A boat or ship used to, parry ca- ca- to carry passengers, vehicles, or goods across a river, relatively short sea crossing, etc., especially as part of a regular service. Wow, none of our 
Definition two. I've never heard of it. Oh. Apparently, <laughs> some kind of sauce. <laughs> what kind of sauce? A fairy sauce. Oh, nice. Uh, and then transitive to carry, convey, or transport from one place to another. Obsolete. Make <laughs> <laughs> <Like> you obsolete. <laughs> So, um, no, but it does what its name suggests. It takes passengers from one land to a different land. Over a body of water. Generally a short body of water. Like, we're not talking, like, you know, you know, the blue ribbon from New York to London or whatever. Well, then that's just a boat. That, that's, a pa- that's like a passenger liner or a cruise ship. Like, this is kind of generally for, like, shorter journeys. Like, when the longest ferry in the world is probably, like, across the Mediterranean. It's the streetcar of boats. That's not bad. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll give you that one. Yeah, yeah. so there's uh, many different types of ferries. Uh, water buses and water taxis, which is, you know, in the name. It's effectively a bus on the water. It serves local routes in seaside and riverside areas. Uh, they're found in many cities, but they're probably most famous and notable in Venice, where they serve as the primary and basically only form of public transportation within the old city. Got to get the tourists around somewhere and all three locals. Yep. Uh, excuse me, there are at least 42 locals. Oh, did some new people move in? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Airbnb should be banned in, in Venice. That's just absurd. That like Anyway, I'm I'm momentarily becoming like, you know, Twitter NIMBY here of being like Airbnb will solve the housing problem. Airbnb <laughs> should be like correctly regulated and then we should get on with our damn lives. Yeah, just go to a hotel. Be normal. Yep. Airbnb sucks anyways. Yep. Yep. Uh, number two is a river crossing, which are often fixed cable guided ferries that serve merely as a bridge replacement in a place where there is too little traffic to justify a larger bridge. These are cool with the cables because they have cool physics. Yes. I forgot what though. <laughs> I have actually been on one of these. Where? Uh, so there's two ways to get from Great Falls, Montana, where my grandparents live, to Fort Benton, which is like a small town with a fort called Fort Benton in it. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a like, you know, local tourist spot almost. Uh, one way, you can just take the normal highway and you cross the Missouri River on a bridge. Boring. The other way is you take country roads. Um and then you cross on this tiny little ferry in the middle of nowhere. How many cars mm-hmm. does it fit? Uh, two max. Cool. That is small. <laughs> yeah, very small. Or like 500 people. Yeah, but it's in the <laughs> middle of nowhere, so like, I don't know what pedestrians are getting on this. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I've been on one of those. It was pretty cool. I don't remember very much because it was a while ago and I was smaller, but... Cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another kind that's highway replacement ferries. So in many <laughs> island base, <laughs> in many island dominated areas of the world, uh, like the Philippines, southeastern Alaska, Washington State, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there is simply too much water for there to be a cost effective and time effective uh, fixed highway link. Yeah, suck at road vehicles. So instead, these places run really like huge ferry systems that take cars, buses, trucks, and other road vehicles across large stretches of water, and then connect up with highways and like these huge terminals. This it's is quite like interesting, this actually. is like the channel without the channel. Uh, it was what was in the English Channel before the channel, and it is still in the English Channel because the channel only has a certain amount of capacity. Yeah, yeah, those are cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then there's long distance, quote, ferries, unquote, which are like, you know, basically just a whole ass ship, which operate across large bodies of water in like the Black, Caspian, Mediterranean, Baltic seas. And they just kind of, you know, like if you're trying to go from like Germany to Finland, you might get on one of these. They're the coach buses of ferries. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Good or analogy. the overnight train. Yeah. Or just, you know. A ferry. A, fer- a yeah. large ferry. Oh, golly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, as we mentioned before, a passenger liner like the Titanic or the Queen Mary II is not a ferry. They are a different sort of transportation, although in many cases this is more of a function of scale rather than of actual difference. Yeah, I mean, you could, it's obviously the difference between that and the one that just goes across the river and you just yell at the dude operating it and they just take you across just because you're there. But yeah. there's less of a difference with the long-distance ferries that already run, like, scheduled trips or whatever. Yeah, this is true. 
So this leads us to the question, <laughs> what has a fairy done in the past? What have fairies done for us? Yeah. Well, that's not a bad question. I'll take it. Uh, so fairies, they've been around at least as long as human civilization. Because, you know, like, back in ye old Stone Age, um, we were very bad at building bridges. And that's, like, until, like, you know, 500 years ago, almost everyone is just terrible at building bridges Okay, all to the be time. fair, materials and tools are hard. Well, yeah, but, I mean, like, there were good bridges before that. Like, the Romans and Chinese had solid bridges before that. But, like... Yeah, but it's hard. Yes, generally good bridges started like, you know, four or five hundred years ago at the earliest. <laughs> and so, you know, if you if you have this bridge, right, and it's the pride and joy of your town, you spent, you know, the whole winter building this bridge because last harvest season, you know, it was hard getting across the river. You've built this bridge, right, between greater... Crappingham upon... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Crappingham upon Luton to... <laughs> Barfingdorf um, <laughs> or something and then the summer comes and all the snow melts in the mountains and the river swells and your bridge goes kaput down the stream and you're like well crap so you rebuild a temporary one and then that winter you build a new bridge and then the same thing happens and you do that again and again until you're like well screw this instead of that we're just going to have a guy with a rope and a boat much simpler Yeah. much simpler this was also back in the day before we had dams and reservoirs and whatnot to, you know, artificially control the flow rate and level of a river. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it was most of the time it was just easier to create a ferry than try and build a bridge that would get washed out all the time. Uh, so... I mean, I would simply use massive amounts of mass-manufactured steel components. Yes, which they had in... <laughs> Crappingham upon Luton in the year of our Lord 600 AD. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> the year of our Lord 600 AD is actually redundant, but anyway. <laughs> um, so most early fairies were powered by human power. Like, you would have, like, literally, like, you know, from a movie, like a flat log raft, right, with a little, like, metal hook that hooks it to the rope. And then the guy would push it along across with, the river. With the paddle. With a, with a paddle or with a stick. To be fair, most boats were human-powered. Yeah, this is true. Cool. Um, but there were some weird experiments. Uh, so as early as the 4th century uh, CE, oxen may have been used to power a capstan-driven ferry. So, like, you would have a capstan on each side of the river, right? And then the oxen would go around and around and around and around, and the ferry would get pulled across, and they go around and around and around the other direction, it goes the other way. That sounds like a boring job. by may have been, did they just find oxen next to a river with what may have been... It is from a mildly unreliable source, from what I could tell. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. History be like... Yeah, history does that. So, um, and then... Horses walking on treadmills? Yes. (laughs) That was mainly an American thing. Hamsters would be pretty good. A lot of hamsters. Big hamsters. G-force, yeah. Rabbits. Bunch of hamsters with, like, a bunch of gearboxes and stuff to transfer the power. Yeah, one hamster with a big gearbox. No, like, that wouldn't work. You need a lot of hamsters. mm. I would like to retract my G-force statement because they were guinea pigs. (laughs) (laughs) So. <laughs> uh, yeah, but in North America, um, we experimented very briefly with horses on treadmills running ferries, which was... Because um, why the hell not? <laughs> because why the hell not? American That's, ingenuity. This is true. Uh, yeah, so ferries were integral to the ongoing western expansion of the United States. For the sake of crossing water. Well, There's water right, like the, the Mississippi is a big ass freaking river. Well, this is true. Like it is we a mile have, across. We in barely a lot have of bridges. bridges across it today. Yeah, we don't have like yeah, it's a it's a hard river to bridge even like with, you know modern I mean today <laughs> you can put a cost number on it, but it's still a lot. Yeah. So you know, you'd have just ferries just like all these guys need to go to the west to do, you know, horrendous genocide and shit. Yeah. <laughs> need. And <laughs> and so they do that via ferry. We probably should have just stayed on the East Coast. Eh. Not a terrible <laughs> argument. Not a terrible <laughs> argument. So the U.S. was also the genesis of the steam-powered ferry, with John Fitch operating the first ever steam-powered ferry on the Delaware River as early as the 1790s. 
Coal, let's go. What a name. I think they ran steam engines off wood back then. Wood, let's go. Because, you know, <laughs> we still hadn't cut down all the old growth forests, so you can oh, just go yeah, and so chop down, like, some. you know, an acre of old growth to run your ferry boat for a day. Yeah. Probably more than a day. Yeah. 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 Big trees. Yeah. <laughs> Not that's, anymore. That's the <laughs> cra- that's the crappy American ripoff Victorian era for you. <laughs> uh, we call it the Gilded Age. Um, <laughs> ferry technology improved rapidly in the 19th century, with paddle steamer ferries and railroad designs becoming commonplace, which was necessitated by massively increasing traffic on many ferries, as in the United States, Western colonization, and in Europe, the Industrial Revolution progressed. So, like. Think of your classic paddle steamer on the Mississippi, right? And then make it, like, the back be on both sides and with, like, ramps that fold out so, like, carriages and crap can go onto it. And you have, like, you know, the typical 1800s American ferry boat. Oh, fancy. I can picture it. Nice. I think everyone's seen pictures of them. Yeah. Um, and then they became a lot larger and faster going into the 1900s, but we got good at building bridges in the 1900s. <laughs> And With so, materials and technology. Yeah. Mostly industrialization. Really. And so, you know, a lot of, like, old ferry routes, like, you know, the, the ferry I took across, like, the Missouri River probably should just be, like, you know, a little two-lane bridge. Yeah, because it's not hard to build. Because in the long term, it might be cheaper. So... Dude, these days we build bridges over bridges just because car. Yeah, yeah. but we can't put that one guy out of business. No, we he definitely can't. He works for can. the state, so he oh, can collect okay. tolls fine, on the bridge then. or yeah. whatever. Uh, hey, for God's sake, we used to have elevator attendants. Uh, that's a job I want. That should be a job that we return to. Mm. I, I, I think jobs like that are sweet. Yeah. yeah. We need I more jobs. That's, that's remote elevator attendant. You see? Work from home. Even better. Work Watch from home as an have a button. Yeah. 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 That'd be awesome. Please state, please state your destination floor. 17. Enjoy your ride. It, it's like how some, some I've like heard operators on phones again. Like there's a hospital it's I've true. been to, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's an operator, and it's really, really nice to hear. Because they realize somewhere. that everyone hates the, the stupid, stupid robot phone operator. Trees, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's always old ladies on the phone. It's just nice. Mm-hmm. It's a good job to have back. It's yeah. a good employment that, program. That's a, that's, yeah. that's a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was wildly off topic. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're wildly off topic. Your mom's wildly off topic. Yeah. She is. Owned. What can you say about that? Uh, She's good at making casual conversation. <laughs> True. Okay. Well, <laughs> you met Kyle's mom. No. Oh. No. Oh. Anyway, you should. She's cool. Okay. I agree. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about some notable systems. So surprisingly, um, North America is probably the best at ferries of anyone. I know. Number let's one. give ourselves a round of applause for being good at transit for once. American exceptionalism. I know. Oh, yeah. this is true. USA Perry. number one in ferries. <laughs> this hey, is, this is true. I'll take that. I'll take a, take a commemorative stamp of <laughs> our ferry dominance. Heck yeah. yeah. That probably already exists. Yeah. yeah. So most, most coastal American cities, with the exception of, like, I don't know, San Diego, have, <laughs> some, have some form of, like, ferry system, like, you know... The MBTA runs a few ferries. New York has just a crap ton of different ferries. Integrates uh, well with their mass transit system. Yes. Yes. Uh, Staten Island Ferry is basically a subway line that just happens to go on top of the water. It's so <laughs> under it. And runs much more or less frequently. So, yeah. you know, we're going to build a Second Avenue subway, but we couldn't extend, like, the one train to Staten Island. That would be against God. Yeah. yeah. Over... Yeah. Like, mind you, the Staten Island Railway is already a fully existing heavy rail, fully grade separated right of way that if you just built a tunnel, <laughs> you could connect to. <laughs> eh, shush. Eh, eh ferry. This would also probably turn Staten Island liberal, but people aren't ready for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this, this may be part of the issue. That may be part of the issue. Yeah. Also, things cost a billion dollars in New York. So. Yeah, if things cost maybe a hundred billion dollars instead of a billion dollars, then we could have multiple things. Or less things and just more money to miss. Yeah, no, it's New York. We need more things. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so so there's a lot of ferries in North America. Like they're they're very common. Um, a lot of them probably shouldn't exist, like especially in smaller cities, and are just like horribly expensive to run and such. But you know that's okay. And a lot of them should just be bridges. 
Well, not really. I mean, like, you know, some of those, like, small ones, like, maybe, but most of the time, they are either redundant or very necessary. Gotcha. So, like, the Washington State Ferries, for example, which is the largest and uh, the, the third largest in, like, terms of routes and passenger, or, like, you know, routes and sh- boats and uh, cars and such is, but it is the largest in terms of passengers. So, pre-pandemic carried about 45 million people a year. Dang. I know. That's a lot, right? Ferries were not something I'd ever thought uh, you'd want ridership data for. <laughs> yeah. And and it's actually quite cost effective. It's about $1.27 per mile, passenger mile, which yeah, is that's fine. quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and basically, if you're unfamiliar with the layout of kind of the Puget Sound, the Olympic Peninsula, and the surrounding islands... It's a lot of islands and a lot of water and a lot of small towns on these islands surrounded by a lot of water. Hence, Le Ferry. Yeah, so Washington, instead of building, you know, a gazillion billion dollar bridges, was just like, oh, let's run some ferries. And then they did. Made the right choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they used these just huge 750 to (laughs) 2,500 passenger uh, 100 to 200 vehicle ferries to bridge the gaps. Um... As far as I can tell, it's the busiest ferry system in the world. I would, I would believe that. That's pretty cool. So yep. you get, like, mass transit by default if you live there. Yes. You have to go out there of your way to do anything but mass transit. The funny thing about Washington is, like, they have ferry-oriented ori- TOD in a lot of places. Hell yeah. Like, there are a lot of, like, these small towns on the islands and such that are, like, quite dense and walkable. And they're just built around the ferry terminal. Yeah. Oh. Huh. I feel like it'd be easy to live without a car on an island right? Well, with a ferry. Because you can't just drive it on the road. You have to pay yeah. for the ferry. So. Yeah, and taking cars on the ferries is yeah. not cheap. Yeah. Ferry we TOD. That's we good. don't subsidize ferry transportation of road vehicles like we subsidize road transportation of road vehicles. Yeah. Ferries, you know, these ferries actually kind of come pretty decently close to paying for themselves. They have a pretty high fare box recovery. Like so. above half? Above half. Cool. Good. Which is what I would call good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Acceptable is over like 25. Good is over 50. Stellar is over like 60%, I would say. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that's off topic as well. Um, yeah. And also, so instead of being stupid and using Bolivian slave mine children uh, to power <laughs> them, they're doing <laughs> kind of an in-between thing. They're going to do diesel-electric hybrid. So, like, diesel engine powers electric motors? I think? Uh, I don't know. That's it's supposed to be better for the environment than the current ones, so... Uh, it probably is. So, there you go. Um, also... Third the rail ferry went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good idea. Yeah, just grounds to the Zap ocean. the fish. <laughs> Overhead third rail. The U.S. The Marines electrified this section of water to zap the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Except it also powers the ferry. Oh. <laughs> um, other notable ferries, the Hong Kong Star Ferries, which is the second busiest in the world. They carry about 30 million passengers a year because Hong Kong is also, you know, a lot of islands and limited subway lines between the islands. Um, NYC has a lot of ferries. They have water buses. They have ferries in both the East and Hudson Rivers. Uh, and then the Staten Island Ferry, which we mentioned, is the third largest in the world. I think it carries about 20 million passengers a year. Uh, that one's free, right? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's free. Cool. I don't think it's free if you take your car in it, but I think it's free if you if you. I, I imagine on. it's not free to cars, but yeah. yeah I, That's an interesting decision. I would have thought that would have been a good moneymaker route. I, I've just heard about people trying to scam you for a fare. The idea <laughs> is to make it because Staten Island should have a subway line leading to New York, and everyone in New York knows it. So to make up for that, they make it really easy for Staten Islanders to get into the rest of the city. I mean, I was thinking just integrate it with the subway fare and provide a free transfer to the subway on one end. Yeah, well, yeah, Pretend whatever. it's a subway line. Yeah, well. Good ferries. So. Yeah. Uh, there's also the Alaska Maritime Highway, which is kind of like a hybrid between long-distance ferries and the Washington State ferries. They don't really, like, there's just a ton of, like, really small communities in, like, south southeastern Alaska 
and have no other way to get around. So, mm-hmm. cool. kind of interesting. Cool. Uh, and then there's ferries in the Bay Area, Golden Gate Ferry, and the San Francisco Bay Ferry. And then the MBTA, Maritime... Probably Ad- faster than going over in either of the bridges. Uh, it's not faster than BART. So if you're going from, like, the East Bay to San Francisco, just take BART and not the Bay Ferry. But you can take the Bay Ferry as well, I guess. If you're coming from Marin, which is north of the Golden Gate Bridge, Golden Gate Ferry may be the best way to get into the city. Cool. So, and the smart train has a theoretical connection to the Golden Gate Ferry, so. My favorite type of connection. <laughs> it's like a mile away is the nearest station, so. Could, that's, could that's be easier. further. It seems poorly designed. Yeah. But uh. anyways, um, yeah, and then like we mentioned, the MBTA, Maritime Atlantic, Ontario, British Columbia, and dozens of others on this continent and hundreds of others around the world operate ferries. I think they're sticking around, probably. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to interesting ferries. So we have uh, turntable ferries, as mentioned in a famous Tom Scott video. Yeah, a good Tom Scott video. Yeah. And uh, they allow vehicles and passengers to board from the side and then rotate to be more balanced for travel. Right, because if you have, like, like, a ferry, right, boats have to be balanced, unlike, like, cars, Right. So if there's too much weight on one side, it will kind of turn and then flip over, and that's bad. And so if you want to board from the side, you have to kind of rotate so everything's over the center of mass of the ship instead of hanging off the side. Instead sides. of having, like, a carefully designed car loading scheme with, like, the valet driver putting all the cars in, like, exactly all the right spots before the boat tips over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then um, train ferries... <laughs> <laughs> which are train that's funny relatively common especially in Europe um, they're becoming less common because we're better at digging tunnels now but um, yeah and unlike unlike the usual situation for ferries which is like small communities that can't that can't justify an entire road bridge trains pretty much always justify a pretty big infrastructure investment wait so the train just Rolls onto the tracks on the ferry, mm-hmm. crosses, and then rolls, rolls off. off. That seems hard to line up. Yeah. No? This is modern technology. You just kind of, you know, pull it over until it's lined up, then you click it in and lock it in place. Train rolls on, train rolls on, train rolls on. You unlock it, close the doors, get out of there, do it on the other end. Yeah. So. It still sounds difficult to me, but... I mean, if they have it it's, down, it's actually yeah. really old technology at this point. So like yeah. train ferries have been around since like trains, eighteen hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like trains. Yeah, like yeah. there used to be just huge ferry traffic across the Hudson River because all the railroads had their terminals in New Jersey for the longest time because there yeah. was no tunnel. So you would take a train ferry across the Hudson River into New York. Ah, I gotcha. Hmm. Sounds difficult to make work, but cool. Yeah. <laughs> and Europe's been doing road ferries since forever. They still do them. That's why they've, they've got the cute little cab over box trucks. One of the main driving factors for that, other than the cities being actually old, is that they fit comfortably on a ferry. And they're better in Well, they're just better, ways. obviously. Yeah. But well, that's why we don't have them. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you can't sleep in them, so... <laughs> yeah. We don't even regulate cab length in the U.S. That's because everything's just, bigger. Yeah. Everything's uh, bigger in the Everything's United awesome States, yeah. and great. So. Mm-hmm. Right, and as far as road vehicles go, bigger is obviously better. Yeah, always. Come on. Um, and then I also just wanted to mention that Utah does already have a ferry in Lake Powell. Really? Uh, yeah, running between Bullfrog and Hall's Crossing. Unfortunately, it is current out of serv- currently out of service for the foreseeable future because of the incredibly low level of water in Lake Powell. I was just yeah. about to ask about Can't that. Can't really run a yeah. ferry in the lake if there's no lake. Yeah. I was thinking, Which like... shouldn't have been a like anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I was looking at it, I'm like, darn, I should... I, we should go do that this summer and just go ride the Lake Powell yeah. Ferry. That'd be cool. Psych! There's yeah. no water in the lake. I refuse to go to Lake Powell. Yeah, what's Lake Powell's deal? Apparently, it's a recreation destination. Yeah. That's it. And it's not nice. water in the Colorado River. Oh, so it's been as, like, an artificial reservoir? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's like um, the really awful one on the... Northeast side of Utah, Flaming Gorge. No, oh, okay. Same, same deal. Mm. I gotta be honest. Both I'm, terrible. I kind of have a problematic view on hydroelectric dams in general. Oh so. yeah, don't worry. 
it's not an uncommon view. Well, my problematic view is that they're good, and I don't care very much about the canyons. Oh, okay. That well, is a we're, problem. We're different <laughs> then, yeah. That, that is, is a problematic view, yeah. yeah. Jeez. I think that, anyway. Anyway, that's entirely irrelevant to the topic at hand. Hey, wait a yeah. second. Why are we just, like, acting like Lake Powell being, like, low or what? Reservoir Powell being, like, low is, like, a force of nature and, like, oh, no, it's bad. I hope it gets better. Why don't we just leave because the water in the reservoir? Because we just got to pray for rain. Why well, don't we just leave the water in the reservoir? Because you have to release a certain amount from the dam into the river, otherwise the dam's downstream gets screwed up and the whole river ecosystem gets screwed up oh. more the, than it already is. The problem is we measured how much rain we would get per year in, in the, the rainiest poss- yeah. part like, ever recorded and base the reservoirs on that. Oh, that's dumb. So, so we, we, all of our consumption is for a lot more rain than we're ever going to get again. Yeah. So ah. there way, like, there's way too much capacity for rain that's never coming again. Ah, uh, okay. So and It would be fine if we would just adjust our expectations. You know, water usage. <laughs> what? You kidding me? <laughs> and then, but there's too many politics that go into that, so. Uh-huh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, there are some problems with fairies, unfortunately. <gasps> I know. Yeah, it's They seem allowed. fantastic so far. They are pretty fantastic. Boats but are cool. they're very carbon intensive. Is that just because you can't easily electrify them off mains? Ships burn, um, effectively what is waste oil, bunker oil, a lot of the time. So, like, uh. in America, most of our, fees, uh, our our ferries are small enough to just burn diesel, which uh-huh. is, you know, problematic in and of itself because you're burning a crap ton of diesel to move this huge ship through the water. But for larger ferries and in other places, they burn bunker oil, ah. which is just, like, the worst possible Sludge. thing. Is that, yeah. like, barely refined? The leftovers Calling it refining. Refi- yeah, the okay. leftovers okay. of refining. Okay. Byproduct, essentially. It's what they burn in cruise ships and... Mm. And cargo ships and stuff. Blech. And so, you know, it's still better than cars, generally, you, you but can, you probably shouldn't be burning it. You can yeah. get a lot more stuff. Do we, do we have numbers for how bad a diesel ferry is versus a diesel train per, like, passenger distance or anything? I don't. I know it's worse, though. Probably is. Because water resistance. Yeah, that makes if sense. If you stop the engines on a boat the boat will stop because of friction. If you stop the engines on a train, the train will coast for a very long ways because it has more efficient energy transfer. That makes sense. Good and, and the other thing is with trains, like especially the newer high-speed ones that dump megawatts of power into the wheels, they can just be like, meh, I don't know, hooked it up to the nuclear power plant, done. Yeah. <laughs> and just shove the entire class of problems out of the way. You can't really do that with a ferry. Yeah. Um, and then the other problem is, unless you're getting very high passenger traffic, they are just incredibly expensive to run. Because boats are hard. Boats are expensive. Even if you get a lot of passengers, they're pretty expensive to run. So, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned the one that did a dollar twenty-seven per passenger mile. Which one was that? Washington Ferries, which are yeah. the most used in the world, it should be noted. And that cost per passenger mile is like, yeah. Fine, I guess. Bus for and a, a half. For a road system. Bus yeah. and a half, yeah. So, like, the lower bound on cost per unit is higher than the higher bound on cost per unit for land transport. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just invest in bridges. <laughs> well, Well, the I thing mean, is we already use ferries where bridges are inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, mostly. Or where we don't want to build a tunnel, MBTA be like... Mm. Um, I guess we just have to deal with ferries then. Yeah. But, but there's worse things to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, I'll hey, take a ferry. There was the, I want to say Tom Scott video about the ferry with the electric electricity yeah, cable. Yeah, that where it loans it up. That's yeah. a good one. Only really applicable that is, on cable hauled ferries across short distances. Uh, you could apply it to longer distance ferries. Maybe. Not really. That was a lie, actually. That was me being full of crap. Well, if the longer distance ferry has a fixed cable it travels along, then probably, yeah. Which yeah, it but it's not going to work for, like, Washington State ferries or anything like no. that. It has I guess to be you could shallow for, water, too. Yeah. yeah. I guess you could maybe do it for Staten Island if, like, you know, you stop all ship traffic through the Hudson River forever, which is never going to happen because <laughs> New York is the largest port on the East Coast. So. Yeah. Because yeah. that one, they have to, like, reel everything up if a real ship wants to pass. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, 
Um, fairies good, and America is like surprisingly good at them and has a lot of them. Oh, good. Something good about. <laughs> Something America's good at transit wise. Yeah, yeah and I yeah. think we're going to do an episode just on Washington State Ferries in the pretty near future because it's a really interesting system and it like interfaces with the rest of transit in the Puget Sound in Whoa, very interesting ways. Whoa, connections? Is that legal? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not legal. Also, we should put a ferry in Utah Lake between Saratoga Springs and Vineyard. I still like that idea. I think it'd be a good idea. I think it's good. Sounds Until fun. we drain it and pay for over a few dollars. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't need a ferry then. <laughs> no, then we can, then we can drive. drive, yeah. Yeah. But maybe ferry when the lake isn't frozen and then ice skates over the winter? <laughs> Just run a bus over it. I don't know. <laughs> Hovercraft ferries. That would be an option that would work in winter and in... Those are actually quite common. I didn't really mention it, but... There are a lot of hovercraft ferries. The ones with, like, the air curtain Like a fan, thing. fan boat? Well, not a lot. There's a few, I should say. Yeah, like a hovercraft. Like it... Yeah. With this, it fills up the skirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. big puffy things. Yeah, yeah, there's one between, I think, the Isle of Wight in the south of England that's quite well used and popular. That's right. the most English place name ever. So, yeah, a little bit. Also reminds me of that Tom Scott video where he gets served on a hoverboat. <laughs> yeah. Alcohol. yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, that could be a technology that could work because I know that they have um, hovercraft in Antarctica. Or we could build a gondola over the lake. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. 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 Let's build a <laughs> gondola over the lake. It'd be just as. This was some practical. really big towers with like orange no, floaties it on them. And it, it you need be... like two hoverboats to run like, or three hoverboats to run like twenty minute service all day every day. <laughs> yeah, but would you not fund hoverboats, or would they fund a gondola? You dot already runs a um, a ferry, so I don't see why not. They That's could flashy. just pull the old ferry that they're no longer using in Lake Powell out of there and put it into Utah Lake and start using Ooh. that. Yeah, I I like the hoverboat idea, but you might get hoverboat nimbies. You might be like. Fans too loud. Turn it Wah. down. Wah. <laughs> you get every- UDOT was does what it wants. You get, you get yeah. everything, Nimbies. And I guess if you make you like a long Nimbies. enough pier from the shore, like, you know, a couple hundred feet off the shore, uh-huh. then that might decrease the noise complaints a little bit. And we're not going to be running it, like, you know, all night. And also people... We should. It's going to be a community Also, service. don't people run hours. there. <laughs> 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 Just keep all the people in Saratoga Springs awake forever as the as a punishment for choosing to live in Saratoga Springs. <laughs> also, people don't ru- don't people run their regular boats on Utah Lake? Yeah, but those aren't quite as loud as a hovercraft is. Boring. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can just arrange boat pools. Boat pools. <laughs> <laughs> people commuting from Saratoga Springs Marina to the Vineyard Marina and then walking boat. to Front Runner yeah. to go to Provo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make a gadget bond between the marina <laughs> and the station. Yeah, like a little autonomous people mover deal, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Or actually. make a canal. Yeah, just make yeah, a canal that make goes. A canal. That'd be a really good thing to have, like, in downtown Vineyard as they're building it. It's like a little water feature canal that also people has. People would eat that up. Uh, they would. Yeah. Be Here like in Utah, Amsterdam. we love our ill-advised water features. <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't we be do. that ill-advised, though. Like, it would be like at most a quarter mile long, and it would serve an actual practical purpose mm. of connecting my ferries to <laughs> Front Runner. Yeah. No, it it, it's not the worst too. idea ever. No, it's to not. Be no, honest. I've definitely heard worse yeah. ideas. We should have like submarine ferries the lake. in Utah Lake. Stop the NIMBYs. <laughs> They're just like barely below the water and scraping along the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boarding the submarine ferry and tapping your card at the entrance, we like. Ooh. It, if they if they complain about the sound, we should just get like a really big monster truck and just drive it past their <laughs> houses all the time and give them give them a taste of what mm. everyone else gets. Yeah, what we have to deal with when they decide to drive their giant ass truck into yeah, the city. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If cars can be loud, why can't transit be loud too? Yeah, I want New my loud. Take. I want my loud hovercraft ferry. Yeah. We should put sirens on tracks, trains. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. No, that'd be annoying. Ride the train, ride the train, the, ride the, the train. The siren only runs when you're in the suburbs. Ah, oh, I gotcha. And, like, deep in the suburbs, too. Like, you know, daybreak it runs. But, like, <laughs> Murray, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so instead of the train being, like, quieter than a passing passing car with the noise fence, it's like... 
Nee, 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 oh. nee. You know what would be worse? The white noise sound. Oh, God. <laughs> so then you can always tell which direction the train is. The poor passengers. Passengers wouldn't hear it. Yeah. Have you been on a blue line? Yeah, it enhances the experience. <laughs> Makes uh, you feel like you're going faster. Uh, imagine having like a postcard that says, we have the only train that makes white noise. <laughs> People would come from miles around to listen to, to that. To break Sing your train. miles around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, from a mile around. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. And this is how we fix our ridership. <laughs> <laughs> In conclusion, ferry's good, car's bad, uh, and please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and to follow and leave, leave us a rating on iTunes and Spotify. If you like what we do, please consider joining us on Patreon, where you can get early access to our content, as well as monthly Patreon-exclusive releases. Our patrons are... At $25.69 per month, Frontrunner Double Track <laughs> Electrify Logan to Payson tier, we have Zach Adams. And at Frontrunner tier, $10 a month, we have Curtis Herring, Devin, Mike Christensen, and Phobos2390. At our Redline tier, $5 a month, we have Brian Smith, Christopher Whaley, Jacob Whitecotton, and Robert P. Walsh. At our ever expanding Blue Line tier, yeah, geez. <laughs> we have Just Cuz, Alex Dykowski, Ben Busath, Bradley Bondi, DJ Will Watkins, I will. I will. Elijah Kensler, Ethan McDonald, Gonzo 12, Jack Dean, John Heron Gorman, Martin Hecker Martinez, Old Trolley, Patrick Salas, Scott Harris, and Seth. Hi. Jeez. Yeah. And thanks to all of you who have joined our new Discord server just for patrons, too. Um, That's fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, I should post what what we're recording today in there, just for fun. Fairies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spell it F A I R Y S, so everyone gets really confused. Sure, definitely, <laughs> definitely gonna do that. Why wouldn't you do that? Because he hates me. Maybe one day we'll have enough blue liners to fill a blue line. Uh, podcast goals. <laughs> I mean, look, if it happens, a one car. Yeah, we can. That, that's what I mean in one car. Mm, we could, we could shoot car. for the. We can have shoot, shoot for, for a two car. Yeah. Well, we can have four separate goals. <laughs> if we get, <laughs> let's see, what's the capacity? Like a hundred, like a hundred twenty seated capacity in a in a blue line, in a two car blue line. Probably. So if we get a hundred twenty blue line patrons oh, in the next we, four years, are we doing seats? Yeah, seats. Oh, okay. It's 64 per car. It's 128. 128 Blue Line patrons in the next several years. At least that's for the booth seating arrangement. We will, I don't know all, other one. we will all come to Salt Lake City. We will have the Red Line Pod Con. And <laughs> we, we will all, all pile in on one Blue Line car. Blue Line car. Or all two Blue, blue Line train. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're going to piss off operations. We so would much. not piss off operations. Yeah, I don't think they'd be happy, be, but. Why wouldn't they? Full train. Yeah, I guess, yeah. As long as we're not, like, you know... If we all pick up a piece of trash, they'll be happy. And leave it under the seat. Yeah. <laughs> like average, true, average. Like an average. <laughs> yeah. rider. Why yeah. is the blue line the highlighted tier? Because it's, like, the most wi- broadly did appealing one. Did you highlight it, or did no, it No, Patreon itself? did that. Oh. It's been Because everyone likes joining the blue line. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should highlight the green line, and then maybe... Maybe we'll someone would join liner. the green line. If you're if, hearing this. If you this, don't do it, I'm going to get an alter ego. We could just that. get rid of the green line. No. We could make, like, additional tiers, right? Maybe maybe someone can sign up. Oh, yeah, Metro up. Films this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is exciting. Oh, yeah, we got to talk stickers because you have some designs. Oh, yeah. So we can look They're at those. Good. Yeah. We can look at those and, yeah. Do we have any AMAs today? Uh, yeah, I can uh, look. Let me check. Oh, yeah, you can look. Yeah. Grind. Is that just Why does no one want to grind with the yeah, line? That one, yeah. Yeah, okay, we do yeah. have. So, for today's Ask Us Anything question, Zach Adams on Patreon asks, what's the oh. best last mile solution? Bike, scooter, Chevrolet legs? Should a good train slash bus network get you closer than a mile to your destination? Yes. It should get you within half a mile of your destination. Yeah. Generally. If maybe, not, maybe closer if it's a bus. In a dense area, it should get you closer than a half mile. In... Suburban areas, it should be about a half mile. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I would say walking is always the best last mile solution. I agree, I agree. I would say last mile. Because yeah. if you're walking, then you're within walking distance of a transit stop, and that is good. <laughs> yeah, the rest of these aren't really solutions. They're kind of like awkward patches on poor bike, service. Yeah, I, as much as I you know like bikes, they are a Band-Aid in terms of being a last mile solution. And they're transit. not a scalable solution? No, not really. At all? Yeah, because yeah. you can only fit so many bikes on a bus Two. and a train. Two. Yeah. Two. Three. Two. Some of the racks have three. That's true. Oh, I've only seen two yeah. racks. Okay. And you can fit, you know, 18 bikes theoretically in a front runner train. Mm. So. Yeah, and the biggest tracks trains that are low floor, you're allowed to have up to 16. Yeah. So yeah, good luck it's doing not that, very though. scalable. Yeah. 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 I don't know. If you're going to bike... That cool. works. Yeah, good for you. But yeah, I like it more than walking. scooters, but yeah, nothing uh, beats or legs. I like scooters. Bike yeah. share is pretty cool as well. Bike share, yeah. And that's yeah. kind of a fixes the problem of. This is an actual usable solution, unlike the I don't know how much stuff can you carry on the we bus. We should have green bike in daybreak. Yeah, we should have green bike everywhere. Daybreak has an abnormally high bike sh- or biking rate, so we should probably we should, have yeah. it there. Yeah, we see some green bike. And then frames. it would provide a really good way to stop people driving to Daybreak Parkway, which is the most used station south of like Murray. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I'd also like to see, in addition to like green bike in nice places like Daybreak and downtown relatively nice also have some dutch style bike rentals available at say i don't know draper front runner station and then you pay your five bucks you've got a bike for 24 hours bring it back well i think that green bikes should generally be spaced out like you know a half mile everywhere in the metro but that's just well me. that would be great but until we can have that you can have a traditional yeah, bike rental tomorrow if we would not build the i-15 expansion that's true. Green bike expansions are pretty damn cheap. And very like, They didn't very even augment for it. what? Like, well, $1,200 per bike. There's like 40 bikes there, maybe? Probably more. Anyway. I don't know. Uh, you have to check the app. You could look on B. <laughs> My favorite app. B. B? B. B Cycle. That's the app they use at Green Bike. Hmm? Not bicycle. B Cycle. B Cycle. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for the question, Zach Adams. Yeah. <sighs> Includes so, Discord benefits. Ooh. Should I Ooh. pull up stickers? Yeah, yeah. I, set, I set up the whole integration so it automatically adds you if you're like hooked into the Patreon. Or you can just message me and I'll send you a link. Should I pull up stickers and we can talk about it? Yes, that? let's talk stickers. Okay.